What is going on, YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today, I am at the Eden Cemetery here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I'm here to talk about the story of Joe Ligon. He is America's longest-serving prisoner. He did 68 years in prison for the crime of two counts of first-degree murder. Joe Ligon was born in 1937 down in Troy, Alabama. Uh, he was the son of... Alabama sharecroppers and when he was 13 years old the family moved up to Philadelphia Pennsylvania now Joe had a rough go at the start of him moving from Alabama up to Philadelphia number one the culture and climate is going to be much different moving from a slow place down in Alabama moving to a big city Philadelphia number two uh, he had a problem in school that being that when he was about seven or eight years old, he dropped out of the third grade. So he's moving up to Philadelphia, going to junior high. He doesn't know how to read or write. He's illiterate. Finally, he just gave up on school, dropped out, and just started hanging out in the streets. So on February 20th, 1953, Joe and four of his friends who were drinking wine all day we're going around town robbing people so they can get money to buy more wine. And in the process, they started drinking more and getting more violent. So they start going out robbing people. And during the robberies, whether the people would give them the money or not, they would start stabbing people. So all that afternoon going into the night, February 20th, 1953... In total, eight stabbings, two of those men died. Eventually, the police rounded up Joe and his friends, and they charged them, other than with the robberies, two counts of first-degree murder. 1953, you're in Pennsylvania. This is already a prison state, so your chances of getting a fair trial, it's not looking good for you. They did not have laws back in those days in terms of sentencing juveniles differently than how you sentence adults. When you're a juvenile, your brain is not formed like how it would be when you're an adult. Hell, there's studies that show that, especially when it comes to men, your brain isn't totally formed in terms of you making rational decisions until you're 25 years old. Now, during the quote-unquote trial, which it never really was a trial, it was more of a hearing, Joe claimed that he did stab somebody during the uh, drunken-fueled um, robberies that they were committing, but that the two people that were killed, the two men, he says, I didn't stab those guys. I stabbed somebody, but it wasn't the guy that died. Regardless of the fact, I'm pretty sure his friends are pointing the finger at him. He's pointing the finger at his friends. Maybe nobody's copping up to the plea. There's really no transcripts that I could find online of the quote-unquote court proceedings. So the judge just throws the book at everybody. So everybody, they get life. No chance of parole. So you're 15 years old and you've just been sentenced to life. Okay, so now what does life really mean? Uh, life, it depends on, I guess, what state you're in. Sometimes there's life with parole. Sometimes there's life with no parole. Sometimes there's life with no chance of parole, but you always hear the stories of people, even though they got sentenced to life with no parole, they seem to always get out a lot of the times. So in this situation, you have a juvenile who, uh, drunk, uh, very immature, very violent, and they, in certain people's opinions, over-sentence him. Or maybe they just give him life and eh, he'll get out in 20 years. Sadly, that did not happen. Now, as Joe Ligon is sitting in prison, hey, not all bad is going on. Uh, this is the first time in his life that he gets to live some kind of a disciplined lifestyle, uh, which he quickly adapts to. He learns to read. He learns to write. He's keeping himself in phenomenal shape. He's reading a lot of books. However, of course, you lost your freedom and you miss many, many things. 
Let's talk about what was popular in 1953 when this dude got locked up. Nikita Khrushchev has just won the power struggle in the Soviet Union after Joseph Stalin died. The Korean armistice was signed. TV Guide, the first issue came out. And the first color television set was being sold in stores. Priced $1,175. And Hulk Hogan was born. Also, the top songs in 1953. Patty Page's How Much Is That Doggy in the Window, Nat King Cole's Pretend, and Tony Bennett, Rags to Riches. Tony Bennett still going strong. I believe he's 95 years of age. God bless that man. And Perry Cuomo had a couple of hits going on. And the popular television shows, the Milton Berle Show, good old Milton Berle, and What's My Line? And then you had the movies and the theaters, War of the Worlds, and From Here to Eternity. But of course, you sitting in prison for 68 years, you miss a lot of things. All the, technology, te the technological advances... Uh, you missed uh, the Vietnam War starting, all the music. Uh, you missed um, TVs being able to fit in your pocket. Uh, tape cassettes. CD players. Uh, you missed 9-11 uh, happened. Uh, girls. Girls, girls, girls. There's no girls in prison as far as I'm aware of. Well, not those kind of girls anyways. You can miss a lot of things in 68 years. Now, let's not get it twisted. In the 70s, a lot of people in the Pennsylvania prison system were getting their life sentences or their ridiculously long sentences commuted. There was a lot of commutations going around, and in theory, Joe Ligon... Could have gotten out of prison in the 70s. But he didn't even apply for any kind of uh, uh, clemency. Being the fact that if he would have gotten clemency, he would have been put on lifetime parole. And he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to answer to anybody. He didn't want to check in. He didn't want to ask somebody if he can go do this, if he can go do that. He didn't want to ask anybody if he could wear brown pants on Tuesday. There's an excellent chance that he would have got out of prison then. But he never even applied for any kind of uh, clemency to his uh, case. So in prison, he sat. And he sat. And he sat. And he sat. And he sat some more. Now, in 2012, the U.S. Supreme Court made all juvenile life cases or lifers as you call them uh they banned it retroactively however each state it's up to them whether they want to listen to the supreme court and P pennsylvania they chose not to so 2012 joe sat some more now in 2000 and i believe 16 or 17 uh they commuted his, they commuted his sentence to 35 years to life which means he basically, he's up for parole. He's going to get it. He didn't apply for parole. Because again, he didn't want to get out of prison and be told what to do. And he sat some more. Until finally, they released him. They finally released him. February 11th. 2021. After doing 68 years in prison. 68 years in prison. This man got locked up when he was 15. Got released when he was 83 years old. Uh, what did he think when he got out of prison? He said, wow, look at all those big buildings in downtown. They're huge. What's a cell phone? He had no idea. He never even probably touched one. Time passes you by. 
and what what an absolute waste to have your life go by like that for a crime that hey he claims he didn't commit neither of us were there so honestly who knows what really happened on the uh, afternoon or evening of February 20th, 1953. But I'm assuming Joe is adapting to life on the outside as best as could possibly be. Uh, I'm sure there's organizations that are helping him adapt to life on the outside. It must be scary doing all that time in prison coming out and you just see things just don't look the same anymore. Everything is foreign and everything, everything just looks weird. This here is the grave of Jackson Ham. I got a little marker out here from the cemetery to mark this grave, he's buried with his wife, Pearl. Uh, he is one of the men that was stabbed and killed on February 20th, 1953 by the group of armed teenagers going around robbing and killing people because they wanted to drink some wine. And about three miles down the road, we're at the Mount Lawn Cemetery here and this is the final resting place of the other man who was stabbed to death that night by the name of Charles Pitts. Now, unfortunately, by the time I got here, because it took quite a bit of time to find Mr. Ham, by the time I got here, the cemetery office was already closed. I called ahead and they told me that this is the section where he is buried. However, I have not seen a stone and I've been looking for about 30 minutes, which leads me to believe that either he was not buried with a stone or possibly one of the many stones here that have fell on his face. And I don't know whether that's his final burial place or not. I want to say this to wrap up the video. Um, many of you have already read about Joe Ligon's story and about what happened to him. And I'm sure many of you out there feel bad that a 15-year-old teenager getting locked up in 1953, coming out 2021, an 83-year-old man, I'm sure many of you feel sad for him. And I, I feel bad for him, too, to have wasted your life away like that. Your whole life, the only thing you know is a prison cell. This whole story around is very sad. Oftentimes, we always have these little sayings about finding the good in a story or a silver lining. There is nothing good about this story. This story is bad all around all around if you think that you can find something good out of this you're crazy this is just a bad story eight people were stabbed two men lost their lives and five kids basically threw their lives away now in an interview i believe with good morning america joe's attorney claims that if this crime were committed in today's society that joe would have been sentenced to five to 10 years in prison and would have been charged with manslaughter. That is an absolute lie. That is not true. We all know dang well that if you or your friends plan on committing a crime and somebody dies in the commission of said crime, practically all the states have a law of parties or whatever they call it in that particular state to where if somebody dies, you're being charged with their murder. If you and your friend want to go rob a bank and just by happenstance, the police show up and get into a shootout and your friend gets killed by the police, guess what, my friend? You're charged with his or her murder. Don't get it twisted. 
We are all looking at a story of a man who practically his whole entire life was spent in prison, but none of us were thinking, watching this man, about the two men who were murdered. Do I feel that Joe should have done 68 years in prison? I would say no. I would say that's a very, very long time. However, two men were killed. It's just one of those very weird cases where something bad happened to somebody who did something bad. And if you want to believe Joe Ligon's story that, yeah, he stabbed somebody, but he didn't kill the person that was stabbed. He wasn't involved in that stabbing. It's up to you whether you want to believe him or not. We all make that choice. And to any and all who want to say that the system is rigged and that this could be possibly a race issue, I say this to you. Some of you may not like what I have to say. That's okay. Many of your favorite YouTubers won't say it anyways because they're too scared. They don't want to lose you as a subscriber and I don't want to lose you either. But all I can tell you is this, if you think the system is rigged against you because you're a particular race, because you're a particular uh, ethnic group or a particular religion, I got some very, very good advice that I want you to remember this when I tell you and hold it to you. If you think the system is rigged, don't play the game. Don't play the game. If you think you're gonna get a longer time in prison, than this other guy because he's a different race don't commit the crime that's as easy said and done millions and millions of Americans out there all across this great nation of ours don't commit crimes we don't go stabbing people I've never stabbed anybody in my life I've never shot anybody I've never robbed anybody I treat everybody the way I want to be treated And that's just what it is. That's just what it is. So rest in peace to Charles Pitts and Jackson Ham. Hey, and uh, to Joe Ligon, well, there's really nothing I can say. I hope the rest of your years uh, are lived in comfort and we all make mistakes we all make mistakes that's why education is in my opinion the most important thing to prevent stuff like this from happening and whether that education is book learned or learned through learning a new skill to where to put your hands to work. It's all gravy train at the end of the day. All right, guys, I think I've, I think I've ranted and yelled enough for one episode. Be good, y'all. Live, but not live, still alive by the grace of God. I'm Lamont at large coming to you from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 36 degrees, it's cold, my hands are freezing. Stay out of trouble, kids. I mean it. I'll see you later. Peace out.